this is our advanced bagpipe workshop. Are we in the right place? <laughs> I'm going to turn the house music down and hand you over. You're a warm welcome to Eddie Martin. Um, because some of you uh, are, are uh, just interested in, uh, I, I don't, has anyone got racks here? Anyone got a rack with them? You've got a rack. Okay. So if anyone's got a rack, or if they've got any percussion with them, then by all means sort of join in when, when there's some bits that I'm, I'm asking for it. You know, I'm trying to make it accessible to you. Um, but other than that, um, I'm presuming you're mainly harmonica players, so I'm covering different, different places at the same time. Um, so, rack here, shall we? Chuck. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I've also got lots of shakers. And, and I can sell these shakers to you a pound for two. <laughs> there isn't any chocolate inside there, so don't try to break that one. <laughs> Um, and um, you know, if you want, if you want to have a go at um, doing some shaping, doing this, probably uh, shaking on, a, on an instrument rather than just shake. Then please go ahead. So I'm just going to start off playing uh, some rack harmonica for you um, with um, standard um, standard blues rhythms, and just give you some idea of. Of uh, transferring your harmonica skills to a rack, and then I'm going to talk about uh, all sorts of things, like, for example, how to choose your rack. If I just play, play a shuffle. Thank <laughs> you. 
one more, and that's playing in, in the first position. Uh, and then as a slow blues, just to give it an idea of uh, what that can sound like in the rack as well. first position. That's like kind of the, the full range, really, and, and, and using the, the harmonica as a solo instrument on the rack just to prove what you, you can do once you've got your rack uh, skills down. Um, most of us, when we first start playing rack harmonica, you know, we're going to keep it really, really simple. And uh, it's great to listen to people like um, Jimmy Reed, um, <coughs> Tabbed Out, uh, you know, Bright Lights, Big City, uh, the solo that Jimmy Reed goes in there. City. Um, because although that last one I just did was in first position, um, Jim, Jimmy Reed's style, you can start off playing uh, like this, you know, for example. <laughs> Seven. <coughs> and Jimmy Reed will play 
Aren't the nine and eight together? Or eight and seven and together? And you'll do a chewy, which is like a little bend. Literally, I'm going cue, cue. So I'm pushing my tongue forwards towards my teeth, <coughs> back for the for the R part. And you do the chew bit, you're bending the note. And then quite often it will slide down. So I'll do that as one here. And then just slide down. And that's a lot of Jimmy Reed solos, really. He's just doing that, but it sounds great, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. And then on the guitar, just a real simple shuffle. Bright light, big sea. there and then I broaden my mouth out to do a chord afterwards. So there I'm playing 10, 9, 8 as a chord at the end and do, just doing a breath vibrato. Um, I've got um, a tab of that whole solo. We're not going to do that now because you know some of you have got racks and you haven't and uh, but uh, you know you can take those away with you if you like. Like that, to, to practice at home because it's kind of a really good way into playing, you know, rap harmonica. It's <coughs> Jimmy Reed, you know, because you can do something simple on the on the guitar. Um, Sorry, Greg, can I just in the singing workshop this afternoon, we'll be teaching you to sing that as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Synergy. <coughs> No benefit at all, no. It's just uh, when I first started playing, there, there were no numbers on the harmonica, ah, okay. and there weren't any original videos. But I had a Sunny, a Sunny Terry video, and Sunny Terry plays upside down. So I figured if it's good enough for Sunny Terry, it's good enough for me. <laughs> so but, you know, I've played it upside down ever since. Um, the weird thing is, is that I'm not left-handed, um, I'm right-handed, but um, I play the, if, if drummers see what I do with my feet, they say, no, 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 it's the wrong way round, mate, it's the wrong way round. You're supposed to do the bass drum on that side and the snare on that side, but, so I do that the wrong way round as well, but, um, something's wired up wrong, so I've been telling me for a long time. So, uh, are there any riffs or things that you find difficult to play on the rack? Well, the only the only thing really is 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 all the hand is all the handles. So that's all I can do. Every every advanced technique I do on the rack. 
which takes me to the prerequisite to playing, um, you know, technical, technically more advanced harmonica playing on, on the rack, or even just to play in it, you know, with any satisfaction. You've got to get a, a, your rack sorted. It's really important because um, when you first start playing, uh, the worst thing that can happen is, is if you push the harmonica rack away from you when you're playing because you just can't play then. So the most important thing on a rack is that it's stable. The next most important thing, equally important, is that this height is your height. You know, we're, we're all a bit different. So that's the dimension you want. And of course the problem is, is that if you're buying harmonica racks online, like we buy everything online these days, they haven't got any dimensions in it, so you can't try it. You might better send it back. But, um, so this, uh, these, this rack is, is the right one for me. This is a, a the Honer 25th one, and that's an inch lower. So there's a couple you could try if you're interested in trying them out. And then um, there are other racks out there, but um, the Flexi rack came along recently, um, and uh, it is amazing how uh, it overcomes a lot of those problems um, in, in rack design that are really important when you're starting out because you tend to push down a lot, a lot harder when you're, when you're starting out. Um, and uh, after you've been doing it for a long time, you've been for years, of course, and I can, I can get away with fairly cheap harmonica racks now. Uh, I just replace <coughs> these nuts. These nuts usually go quickly, and so I'll put some heavy duty ones on, they'll just stronger and that quality nuts that don't, where the threads don't um, uh, uh, fall apart. Um, and as long as that's, as long as you put it on and you can tighten that up, and this, this doesn't move, <coughs> then that's, that's a start. That's, that's, a, that's where you start. Yeah, the flexi rack has got all sorts of other interesting things going on as well. Uh, some people find that the angle of the tray that the harmonica sits in, this one has got, there's no choice in it at all. With, with the flexi rack, it's got a couple of screws here, so you can actually angle it up or angle it down, depending on you know, what you feel like you want to do. So we do recommend those. Um, the reason I've, yeah, so um, I actually don't, uh, over the years, just because I like the simple life that we all, as we get older, um, I don't play amplified harmonica on the rack anymore. I used to play amplified harmonica, used to do the whole electric one man band thing. So I've got rigs here where I can show you, I'll, I'll demonstrate it in a minute, um, the, um, the sounds you can get if you're interested in the, in the amplified uh, harmonica sound on the rack, because you can get it, uh, you can get close to it. <coughs> but I, I, I only use the flexi rack now for, for this uh, amplified set up and, and for my, my bulk of my playing now is, is just acoustic so I, I can, <coughs> as, as you get older and uh, more you play then you you learn not to push down too far but to start with you need to um, you need to push down quite hard on your, on your rack to feel like you're um, able to bring in all the techniques that you know you could, you've got with, with your hands you know when you're just playing it with your hand um, so yeah, experiment with racks um, if you're interested in doing it. And um, the, uh, you know, when you're starting, you're not going to play um, sophisticated stuff like I was doing there. But you can make a really good sound. Like Jimmy Reed's a good example. If you're into Americana, um, Bob Dylan, you know, um, the. Um, Woody, early Woody Guthrie, if you like that sort of stuff. The lovely sounds he gets on, on, on harmonica. A lot of the Woody Guthrie and uh, Bob Dylan stuff, um, if you can remember that phrase, chewy, that's used a lot in, in, in getting that Americana sound. Okay, okay. Yeah. There are lots of other manufacturers of racks if you buy any of the others. I've tried quite a few. I haven't tried the side one, which I'm told is good. It's really expensive, that one. Yeah. Yeah. The thing that I use, because I couldn't get on the rack, is a magnet. No, I've never heard of that one. Really. Yeah. What you do is just an L-shaped piece of um, steel with a magnet on it. Right. And you unscrew. 
through the bowl of the SM58, mm -hmm. and it goes over that, that okay. circle, screw it back on. And there's this magnet that's just below where the microphone is. So you just put your mic on your micro on that. And I can get less stressful. My technical pushing is obviously bad. So I've got the whole mic stand holding it when I'm pushing against it. Try different ones and, and yeah, it's just another one because I, I, you know, the bulbs went and all the nuts. I didn't think it was a place that needed to. So, Bob Dylan's style and Woody Guthrie's style in the corner. That truly sound. Very accurate with uh, uh, with this style, but it, it, luckily you, it, it, it sounds good whatever you do <laughs> with, with the Americana stuff. start doing something like that then let me go uh, so playing the guitar before I before I leave the guitar I'm going to uh, just introduce you to rack harmonic uh, rack harmonic and <coughs> amplified sounds okay because uh, it's hardwired into our interest as blues harmonica players the Chicago the holy grail that all harmonica players are trying to get the, the cup right and the, the equipment right and the technique right to get that bassy sound, you know. Um, so you've got this massive disadvantage when you play the rack and you're trying to get um, an, um, a good fat amplified sound because you can't use your hands. So um, I'm just going to, um, I don't, as I say, I don't, I don't really play uh, solo amplified much anymore, I'm, I'm pretty much just play acoustic. <laughs>
understand that you can get all the whole coupling in, but it's a passable, it's quite a nice section, <coughs> really. So if you listen to people like the early um, one man bands, or people like the electric one man bands, a guy called Dr. Ross, you've heard of him? Yeah. Dr. Ross. Mm -hmm. So he played lots of boobies. In fact, Chicago Breakdown was, was his famous one. And this is pretty well the, the rig that, that he would use an old a technology microphone and an old technology amp. So um, this is quite a faff, really, getting. What, what I've got here is I've got a really good harmonica microphone, just like you'd use if you're a few of the Chicago sound. This is a Sure 707A from 1940s. It's got a Yamaha 9986 elements in it. For all you nerds out there, knows what I'm talking about. You know, it's, it's top spec, and they're hard to get hold of now. I mean, harder and harder. So that's um, that was used to be uh, my, my go-to mic all the time, really. And I've, what I've done, because it's quite heavy, I've wired it to a flexit rack, and then I've gaffer taped all around it with, um, with uh, to try and imitate that cut sound. Has somebody heard my story about um, <coughs> cut hands that happened to me? Well, well, first, you heard of Trossian, the Trossian Harmonica Festival. Well, I did a rack harmonica workshop there in 2006, and um, uh, a, somebody, a German guy contacted me beforehand. He knew that I played rap at the mic harmonica. And he knew that the problem you know, we face is that we can't use our hands on it. And he said, oh, Eddie, I have, a, I have an idea for you. I've been working on a new solution to this problem. And I said, great, I can't wait to see it. And uh, I turned up and he'd been to a surgical modeler. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> This pair of huge clown's hands, <laughs> it stuck them on the rack. <laughs> and, uh, yes, so, uh, I didn't, I didn't use it. Yes. <coughs> it actually raises a, a, an important point, actually, about racks, for me anyway, is that um, part of the reason that I use the rack that I'm, I'm using now, my rack that I've just lost, <coughs> is because um, what, what things look like affects how, how you respond as an audience, doesn't it? If somebody's got something really weird <laughs> hanging around their neck, you know, obviously clown hands, you know, we draw the line of that straight away, that's a long starter. Yeah. But um, wearing a great big, um, like, Darth Vader helmet, you know, <laughs> on, your, on your rack, people, people, um, you, you know, you, 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 you sometimes you hear what you say, you know, Music. I really didn't want that to happen. But also, it feels intrusive, you know. It's, it's hanging around your neck. So, um, in the end, I got this really cheap one off eBay because it was black and little. And luckily, it was the right dimension here. And I just changed the, the screws. Um, and for me, that's like visually unobtrusive, you know, so it doesn't get in the way of an yeah. audience sort of concentrating on the music and not pretty how weird you look. <laughs> yeah. um, so, just to, in case you're interested on the um, amplified harmonica front, if you're interested in getting an amplified harmonica sound and playing on rack, um, this is, you know, I've spent ages trying to sort this one out, and uh, you, know, you, you can experiment and experiment and experiment. Um, a new, mo new product has come out, which is this one, which a lot of people are using now in America. Uh, and it's called Racket, and it's from an American <coughs> called Greg, Greg Hoyman. And you see this little thing on the end here? That is um, a microphone that he's had developed called a Bulletini. Yeah. Uh, and it's old, old technology. It's, 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 uh, I'll put it to him because it's a bit loud, this one. Um, and he's got this plastic molded uh, product which. Uh, and a cylinder around it, so that the, the microphone is pointing into the cylinder here, and then the only opening in the cylinder is where the harmonica goes, and you slot the harmonica in the end of it. It's pretty slick, actually. Um, so although I'm not... There's a specific tool to harmonica slot? Just, just ten holes, yeah. You can't put a chromatic in there. No, no, I mean, in different plates are different. No, they all fit. Yeah, they all fit. All the ones I've tried, yes, yeah, so I was off or hope how it's fit in there. Oh, 
going on. Sorry. solo and you're a harmonica player, um, well, there's only a few numbers you can get away with really, isn't there? Do you think? Unless you're Joe Felisco, you, you get away with a few harmonica numbers and then just harmonica and a voice. What is it, what is it not satisfying? Because we want a whole body experience when we listen to music. So harmonica tones is pretty well up here, you know. Um, so how can you... For, for me, this is this always a thing, really, but um, I, get, I kind of get bored with acoustic instruments after about 10 minutes in a concert or 20 minutes in a concert, unless, this, unless I'm being moved here or there's a rhythmic thing going on. You know, you tap your feet, you know, what's tap my feet. So if you're that sort of person and, then, and you're a harmonica player, good news, <laughs> you, can, you can do other things. Um, so let me just play some of um, my harmonica stuff, uh, my harmonica one man band stuff to, to show you. Um, so, Fox Chase, Train Blues. Um, Yeah. <laughs> 
um, it's a hip hop sort of rhythm going there. Got that? That's the basic beat. And then I'm just doubling up the bass drum. So one, two, three, four. So that's um, this. This is the off beat. If you like this. And then the shakers are just doubling up the beat. It's not that hard. Once you get used to doing it, then you can improvise a little bit. Because I, I'm really a, a songwriter rather than, than a guitarist. Oh, I wanted to play, and I'm always thinking about arranging songs, you know. So I bring an arranger's head to uh, the one man band um, and think of how to build light and shade into a song, or how to how a chorus might need a little bit of emphasis. So you can really, really simply uh, use foot percussion to build um, light and shade in a song or emphasize. Parts of the song um, compared to others. So do one more, one of my own songs, which uh, kind of shows you that that was kind of a hip hop, a more a modern sort of hip hop beat. So here's one which is <coughs> a song which is based around um, sort of some house, uh, Fred McDowell, uh, Delta Mississippi stuff, and uh, style on the guitar. Mm -hmm. And um uh, it's a song called uh, too much it's notes called um it'll tear the whole house down before we wake up. And look at what I do with the uh, foot percussion on this one. <laughs> sounds that are going on there. I've got a really low tuned guitar and I've got a really low tuned harmonica so I've got a low F harmonica. So it's quite bassy and quite heavy sounding. It's quite a heavy song isn't it really? And uh, and then I've got this, this slide going on right at the top there. 
So we've got a range of different sounds, lots of bass sounds and the bass drum. And now I've got my, my the high sounds with the, the hi-hat and with the, with the slide. So, you know, it's kind of, kind of like sculpting an experience that is, is not just in one tone register, do you know what I mean? You know? And just as a one-man band, you can do that. Um, that's kind of different to traditional blues one-man bands, because if you, if you listen to Jimmy Reed, it's all the way through it. Yeah. Or um, Jesse Fuller, or, or Dr. Ross, they used to do that with their feet. Because it, it, was, it was dance music, they were coming from a sort of juke joint tradition where you have to make a lot of noise and have to keep it going and, and make, make people dance, because otherwise they might shoot you. <laughs> um, don't drop the beat. It's a, a capital offence. Um, so, from a modern songwriter, songwriter point of view, you, you haven't got the same constraints, and so you can think about using what instruments you've got just to uh, uh, make the most of your song. Any questions? Any? <coughs> you got any CDs with you, Eddie? Have you got a, just a regular drum pedal behind you? Ah, yeah, let me tell you about the, what goes on with your feet. Well, yeah, what was your question? Have you got any CDs with you? Oh, I have, yeah, yeah. Just by a, bit, by a coincidence. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, it's quite easy. Rob, my, my approach to the, um, the one man band is quite old school. <laughs> I'm quite. Keith Robinson, you know. Um, by contrast, you the son of Dave, you the son of Dave? Yeah, 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 yeah. What a great musician, what a great, what, I mean, you know, harmonica one man band, he's brilliant. Yeah. But he's using a lot more technology than me, he's using looping pedals. Yeah, and, yeah um, he does an awful lot without that. Uh, the, the, what I've noticed when he's setting up, he's using the stage and making a cross where you've got the resonance of the stage. And although I thought it was a loop, it was actually his foot. Stamping on the floor and then stamping on a carpet. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I could, I could run through his whole text back with you. It's really interesting. It's lovely, isn't it? But I'm going to talk about mine instead <laughs> <laughs> because that's what I'm getting paid to do. <laughs> but it, it, he's great. I mean, he's great. But he, he, he's, uh, um, he's a different, different uh, school. I and mean, even though he's a really good harmonica player, this is a good lesson for you know intermediates and people. You, haven't got all the, all the chops down yet on, on the instrument. Some of Dave plays, um, because he writes songs, you know, this idea of using the harmonica as a, as a song accompaniment rather than as a solo instrument, um, he, he uses his harmonica as, as uh, a song accompaniment. You know, he doesn't do really flash solos, really. It's, it's about a rhythm thing, you know. So when, when it comes, even without looping uh, your, your harmonica playing, Itself. The beat drum there is, is a, a felt one rather than a, a hard plastic one. But it doesn't sound like a heavy rock drummer, it sounds like that. Well, it just sounds bassy and, and fat. That's what I want to hear, um, that sort of sound. And then the suitcase, this is the best suitcase I've had over, over 20 years. And unfortunately, you, you have to literally kick them to pieces. Yeah, literally. So um, they don't, you know. This is on its last legs now, it's held together with gaffer tape. But the dimensions of this case are superb for acoustics. For, for, it's just a, an acoustic um, fact about this proportion of the uh, uh, front and back and sides. It's made of heavy leather, it's an old suitcase, old leather suitcase. 
Inside, I've got a really good microphone, a good bass drum microphone, that's, that's gaffer taped in there, so it doesn't move, um, <coughs> which enhances the bass response, and loads of, of clothes, you know, if I'm on tour, as we dirty washing on. <laughs> <laughs> but so uh, you've got to stuff it full of clothes to get that bassy sound. Um, so that's that, and on the PA, you just whack the, the bass line up, it's, and it, it fills the sound. There's loads of different things you can do with your right foot. I mean, I used to, um, I used to do a full one-man band where I play snare drum with my right foot. So there, I've got my a proper bass drum on the left. So, you know, you can experiment with sounds uh, with the, with the percussion. Try different suitcases. I've got bass drums as well that I use for recording. They sound a little bit different. This is a bass drum, and then on the right hand or the right foot. I've got, you know, a standard hi-hat from a drum kit. I've got also got a snare drum, but instead of a snare drum being on a stand, it's just lying on its end, so it's, yeah. it's like that. So I've got the hi-hat and the snare drum together, and then um, and I'm playing just a simple... So on the right, the snare drum and the hi-hat hit at the same time. And then I'm doing a really simple electric guitar part. I can shuffle with them. Yeah, so that's uh, what I used to do with um, the amplifier stuff. That was before I could, uh, I developed the skills in my feet as well. But um, so that was just really simple. If I do that now, I go. <laughs> So, thing to do if you're interested in, in bringing percussion in with your harmonica playing is just to experiment with different sounds. So, for example, you can get loads of different tambourines. Uh, I just said you can use a hi-hat. I mean, if, you, if, you, if you've got a drum kit at home or know somebody who's a drummer, uh, then just a hi-hat sounds good on its own. If you put a tambourine on top, you get, you get a little bit more sparkle. Yeah. But uh, I find, you know, seeking simplicity in all things, but if I just have that, it does what I want it to do. Yes. Tambourines come in all sorts of, of, of designs. This is actually the sort of tambourine that's meant to fit onto a, a drummer's hi-hat. So it's got a hole in it there to fit, fit on there. And it's, ru it's rubber coated, um, so it doesn't, it's not as loud and, and brash as, um, as, other, as other tambourines, but you can <coughs> them all. So these are, these are metallic ones. Listen to a range of sounds. Just gives you an idea. So this is my favourite one. They're all different, aren't they? They all do a different thing. So um, experiment with them and, uh, and see what you think. Uh, see what works for you. With shapers, the, um, these are just, just 
it's a really, really cheap um, showcase you can get. I can do, do you two of these for a quid. I've got quite a few with me if you want to give it a try. Two for a quid. Um, Son of Dave uses a, a big African shaker. It gets a, a more bassy sound out of it. He's breaking the plug and things and using something else, isn't he? Yeah. So you, you can... Or that, that other one with you. Oh, that's another one. Yeah, what yeah. What is it called? I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if you go to an ethnic music store, you know, you can try all these different things. I've, I've got a whole range of them for these, these for most purposes. But if you're doing recordings, then you can um, experiment with the different sounds um, to see what you think works best for the, for the song. Um, <coughs> what are we doing for time? 20 minutes. Right. In terms of rhythms, you, you, if, you're, if you can just tap your feet like this, if you put an instrument behind each of those, then you can do, you can do um, a simple shovel. Slightly faster, you can do country blues. Shall I play another? Yes, go for it. Could you tell us something about the amplifier, please? Yeah, so, um, the, um, as I said, I'm, I'm sort of old school when it comes to harmonica technology. So, um, an amplified harmonica for me sounds best in that sort of classic Chicago uh, setup. So, this is a Fender Champ. It, it's, um, it's 1970 or 71, but I've had it rewired so that it's sort of 1960s Fender technology, the sort of uh, the blonde uh, tweed uh, Fender Champ. Um, yeah, standard Fender, Fender Champ. And then I told you about the harmonica microphone already, didn't I? This is a Shure 707A. The control <coughs> Any other questions? Well, just a, I'm interested. I've got. Um, I've never used it in anger, but I've got a cocktail drum kit. Oh right. So I imagine that could work for that. Absolutely. Yeah. Some of the little drums sound great, actually. Um, do you know the Ain't Nothing But Club in, in King Street in Soho? In so, uh, yeah. so he's got a premier junior. Child's kit in there. I was on stage. It's such a tiny stage as well, from here to the end. And um, it's it's actually a really good drum kit. But it looks like a kid's drum kit, and uh, you can get some great sounds out of it. But I, I was on tour with my my trio, who were uh, from Texas. My, my rhythm section used to be from Texas, uh, and it was the first time they'd been to England, and they were really excited to be playing. Um, when I said I got a gig for him in London in Soho, they were like, oh, the moon, you know, great. Um, and then the drummer saw the, the kit that he was expecting to play. Like, I can't believe you expect me to play on a toy drum kit, Eddie. <laughs> 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 and I said, well, you can see the sign of the, the, the stage, Jimmy, you know, it's, it's what we've got. And then he played it. I know I put it down and he goes, that's one of the best sounding drum kits I've ever had. I'm always going to car boot sales, yeah. and looking at for bits of percussion and uh, my wife's shake rat. Yeah, I've got, I've got cases all over the place, suitcases that I try out. You know. mm -hmm.
when, I'm, when I go to a car boot sale, I've, I've got my bass drum kick pedal with me. Nobody in my town will work on what bloody can I get in there? And I'm putting it on the floor and I'm, I'm kicking it with my bass drum, <laughs> listening to the sound. Because you can tell straight away <laughs> yeah, because it's got a good sound. <laughs> Andy, have you got your kick pedals actually connected to the case to stop it pushing? No. Because it's quite a heavy one, it doesn't tend to move very much. What about the case though, doesn't it? On shiny stages it, it, yeah. it moves, but it's all right on here. Um, so you, I, have, I have in the past made, um, you know, Heath Robbins and stuff, <coughs> bits of, you know, carpentry, plywood, and to stop things moving yeah. on stage, no rubber back them and stuff, you know. Um, when, it was a, when I used to use the snare drum, I, I did all sorts of complicated things to make the snare, the snare drum work. Um, and in the end, I just found that if I just, <coughs> just take it off its stand and just put it on its end, um, if I put a brick behind it, it's fine, you know, and it sounds great. You can, you can experiment, it's fun if, you know, if you're into that sort of thing. We're all nerds in one way or another, aren't we? Um, I've tried all sorts of things with the right foot as well. At the moment, I, I, you know, I, for simplicity, I just use a tambourine. But when I was using snare drums, you can get, you can file your sticks down, drumsticks down, mm -hmm. so that it fits into a beta. into a beta, into a beta like one of these, and then you can play the snare with a stick yeah. or brushes. You can put brushes in there. Great sound. <laughs> in fact, um, if you listen to Doctor Ross, uh, the thing's not really working so well. I think. He's, he's using that, he's using a, um, a brush. So this is Dr. Ross. <coughs> His bass drum is really quiet, but he's just doing this. Um, he's got a stick on, a, on, a, on, the, on the rim of a snare with his right foot and then a quiet um, bass drum. And then he's just playing this sort of technology with the, with the harmonica microphone. But once again, it sounds great. Real good danceable boogie. That's all he's doing. Bass drum, hi hat. That's all he's doing all the way through, and just strumming with the right hand. There's no nothing clever going on. And then he does his first position blow bending solo. It's a real good first position player. Why first position? It's just, I think it's, it was a kind of a traditional thing from learning Jimmy Reed songs, you know. He was kind of one of the most popular blues artists of his time, wasn't he? Yeah. He was a pop star, really. I've seen a couple of little Jimmy Reed. Is that a different Jimmy Reed? Yeah. I'm not sure if it might be related. He's close to the Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's as, as blues migrated from the south and went left, left and right, west and east, the, the various um, um, ideas in those, they spread to the east of that style and the west became Chicago. Yeah. And so you know, they developed fairly um, substantially from the south, coming up to that first position style. Yeah. The other thing, I mean, Dustin Bennett is a great example of how, um, with limited technique, you can get a great sound out of your one-man band, which is touching all the bases in terms of the sound. So the other advantage we're playing uh, first position is that if you've got a really bassy sounding guitar, and you haven't got a bass guitarist in your one-man band, so you want to do that on your guitar, you want to put the bass up, and that's what he does. You can hear it's really playing really low and bassy. So when he's doing a harmonica solo, it sounds like a really full sound. You know, he's hitting every tone register because of the high harmonica. 
it? Yeah, it's not, it's not rocket science, the percussion, is it? That's all it is. Cool. Shall I just um, <coughs> leave you with another little uh, piece? Uh, oh, any more questions? Just, more? Yeah, just about, sorry. Yeah. The guitar, is that a Gibson? Is that a fancy Dover you're playing? Or? This is a proper national, yeah, this is a real nice national guitar. So this is a, a national resident <laughs> style O. Um, and that one's actually a Kincaid, it's a um, handmade guitar from a luthier in Bristol. But if you wanted to sound like um, Dustin Bennett just then, cheap, any old cheap electric guitar will do. If anybody wants to buy a flexi back, which is, is, is kind of the, the best stable um, rack, <coughs> harmonica rack that I've found, especially for, for starters, um, I've got there. Those are 50 quid. I've got a cheap little uh, holder one for 20 quid, which is, if your dimension, this dimension is, for you, is an inch lower, then that'd be the one for you. Um, Yeah. Try and uh, 